Okay, this is my 1945 International Harvester TD9 tractor. Picked up uh, a few months ago. It was a quote unquote good deal. Um, and the engine ran, so I thought that, that was, uh, it was worth saving. Um, needs quite a bit of work. It has a, a Bucyrus Erie blade on it and I've just taken off the hydraulic cylinders and taken them to the hydraulic shop to get rebuilt had a hydrico pump on it which I'll show pictures of later when I get it back from the shop uh, it was leaking through the input shaft seal so there was quite a bit of fluid there like I said the engine runs uh, it, it wasn't starting on gas before I got it so I had to rebuild the gas side over here, uh, the magneto, and the carburetor. Carburetor is pretty simple, there's not much to it, and uh, that was easy. Uh, the seals I just made out of some Felpro uh, seal that I had from a, a lying around from an automotive job. Uh, there's the magneto. It was timed internally wrong, um, actually for a right-hand rotation, and this thing takes a left-hand rotation. Um, and I put on new plug wires and new plugs, and um, and it was also the magnet was timed wrong to the engine, so I had to pull off um, the uh, the case here where it where it engages with the um, gears on the on the engine um, to get it to time right so now it starts right up on gas and switches to diesel uh, the big problem when I got it was that it wouldn't turn <laughs> so uh, the brakes were not working so I knew I was gonna have to to work on those and and uh, I should have taken some video before I started pulling it apart but uh, this thing has been abused uh, for a large part of its life so now I'm, I'm just Trying to get it back to uh, some semblance of um, usability. Um, the undercarriage is in pretty good shape. And uh, you can see the little inspection panels that are supposed to be here are gone. Uh, and also the inspection panels on the bottom. I don't know if I can get a video of that. That are supposed to be there are gone. So when I pulled off the inspection plate here. You can see I got all the controls off and everything like that, which hadn't been greased in decades. So um, all those bearings um, and bushings were worn, so I've had to remachine those. Lift this plate up. <clears throat> so all that's pretty straightforward, taking that off, taking the tank off. <laughs> straightforward but heavy, there's the tank. Uh, and you can see I'm forced to do this in uh, next to my shop. Um, because I've got other projects in the shop, which I haven't finished yet, so anyway, on back to the tractor. Uh, so I pulled the plate off, the uh, access panel, and I've started working on getting the clutches off. So if you don't have these, or the plates on the bottom, your clutch compartments get full of mud dauber nests. So this is pretty clean, actually, compared to what it was like when I when I uh, first took it off, it was completely full of mud dauber nests. This side, um, not as much because you can see it's pretty wet from uh, gear oil leaking out from the differential. The bolts that hold this uh, cover plate on uh, were finger tight. Some of them not even finger tight. So. Um, and you can see, like on this side, that's a stud on top. It's not supposed to be studs on the top. There's supposed to be a bolt on the top. So four bolts on the top and studs along the bottom. Um, this side is just messed up. Whoever was in here last, there's a combination. Of, they just put studs and bolts where they felt they, they wanted to. Um, the brakes, so here are the brake bands. Got the entire brake band out from the left side. And uh, you can see there's nothing left. I mean, even like not much left of the rivets. 
and I thought I could reuse these bands and just get new material put on, but this has been re-welded. Um, so I don't know if I even want to bother with uh, trying to, to do that. So that's the left, that's part of the left hand band. Um, here's the rest of the left hand band. And you can see it's cracked and, and uh, worn down. It's supposed to be a quarter inch thick on, uh, on this model with these brakes. Um, the, there's a different braking system that uses a different pivot pin that goes with a 3 8 inch brake material, but this, this takes a quarter inch. Uh, this is the right hand brake band. Slightly better, but still sad, sad shape. Um, the, uh, the adjusting pin on the bottom to tighten these up, um, they ran out of adjustment, so they, whoever had this last put, uh, five washers on there to tighten it even more. Um, so that's that. There's your, um, uh, brake band. Uh, it's supposed to be a spring there. There was no spring there. Um, that's an adjusting pin to keep the brake band uh, a certain distance away on the front of the drum there. And uh, oh, and then you've got these these bolts here that attach the dr uh, clutch pack to the flange that drives. The sprocket and on this side here there were one two three so far that I found that had no bolts so that's probably not good uh, and it looks like there's a fifth one down there um, so part of the problem with this tractor is you know the manual says take out the bolts and then insert a long bar into this slot and pull it to rotate the drum and when doing that you're gonna make the tractor move um, so I put a two-foot crowbar in there and uh, pulled as hard as I could on it and it didn't budge so I went and got my six-foot digging bar here from Harbor Freight and actually the Harbor Freight one I compared this one to the one at Lowe's this one's got the nice long um, flat end on it which fits in there perfectly and with a six foot bar there uh, you put it you know right down in there and you can you can rotate it I guess whoever did these last didn't have a bar long enough maybe and they just didn't want to rotate the drum and put the bolts in on the bottom um, so anyway the yokes for um, engaging the clutch uh, I've removed on the left side here it was a little bit easier because the pivot bolt which you have to remove from down underneath um, right in there and right over here the left side came right out um, because you can see the supports are a little bit off center so the left side here, there was enough space for it to drop out. The right side, it couldn't drop out. So it's still sitting right in there. And it made it very difficult to wiggle out the yoke on the left-hand side. Um, so I don't know how to remedy that. But once I get these clutches out, then I'll, I'll pressure wash this and clean this all up. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, I have to make some new plates for here and get some either get some new inspection plates for the bottom to close that off so I don't get mud daubers back up in there or just make some. Um, let's see what else. Oh. They had replaced, previous owners had replaced the uh, button head. So these are the, these are the button head grease fittings or oil fittings actually you're supposed to have on the rollers and on the uh, idlers. And um, 
you can see this one's a grease fitting. So they had replaced those with, with regular uh, grease nipples instead of uh, the button head fitting. So I have to get new ones of those from McMaster. And uh, I ordered the wrong size. These are quarter inch NPT and I had ordered three eighths. So I'm gonna have to get new ones of those. Um, so a lot of bolts missing off this thing and I think wherever they had a bolt that was missing they just replaced it with uh, a weld. So I have to cut some welds to get panels off. You can see like here, they just welded that all up. There's there's welds all over this thing. Um, okay, that's it for now. So for today, I'm going to finish um, taking those bolts out. Those are safety wired. I think on this side they use hangers, uh, old hanger wire, because <laughs> it's you can see how thick it is down in there. Um, so get those out and then um, put in my clutch compressor tool, which I just made out of some channel cut down. Hopefully that does it. Um, and those go on and they they press in, you know, your your clutch spring so you can you can move this out far enough to, to lift out so uh, that's it for now it'll be interesting to see if the if the clutch is all seized up clutch packs all seized up once I get it out all right more later <laughs>